Hi, good afternoon. This is a quick recording of our topic 1-4 slides, just to go through the introduction to simple harmonic motion in case you need a little bit of help in uh, getting started with topic 9-1. Couple of, several learning outcomes here, but primarily there to recognize uh, simple harmonic motion through the definition of simple harmonic motion in terms of displacement and acceleration relationships, and also the different sinusoidal graphs of displacement velocity and acceleration for something undergoing simple harmonic motion. Uh, and to get some reminders on the different definitions of frequency period and things like that. I, a good activity to get started with, I won't go through it here, is to analyze this video, which shows three different oscillating motions. We have uh, a simple pendulum bobbing back and forth. We have a uh, mass on a spring moving up and down, and we have this spot moving around in a circle. And the fact that these uh, repeat their motion uh, over a period of time called T, the period, and they have an amplitude of displacement is why we would call them oscillating motion or periodic motion. Uh, so taking a look at the graphs of position and velocity in particular is useful with these three examples. When we talk about simple harmonic motion, we're talking about a special type of repeating or periodic motion. And uh, specifically, it's defined as one where the magnitude of the restoring force that's acting on an object is proportional to the displacement but points in the opposite direction to the displacement. The best example of this is the mass on a spring. Uh, if you have a, a force that obeys Hooke's law in that it's proportional to the displacement, in an equilibrium position, the mass is uh, not going to be receiving a force to the left or to the right. But if the object is displaced to the right, it receives a restoring force that points to the left. Uh, on the other hand, if it's displaced to the left, there's a restoring force that points to the right. And the further that displacement is, the larger the magnitude of the restoring force. And that's exactly what we mean, is that the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. Uh, when that happens, of course, the acceleration is proportional to the force. And so the definition of simple harmonic motion is really that the acceleration is proportional to an opposite of the displacement. So if we looked at a graph, for example, of the acceleration versus displacement, it would have this line with a negative slope. And uh, there are a few characteristics of simple harmonic motion. One is that the period and amplitude remain constant. So if you displace the object to the left one centimeter, uh, it will accelerate towards the right, will receive no force at equilibrium, but then it will translate all the way over to positive one centimeter and move back and forth. Uh, if you were to displace it less, uh, the, the period of motion would remain the same. Simple harmonic motion period does not depend on the amplitude. Uh, only on some geometry factors. And we'll see that in topic 9.1. Uh, and the displacement velocity and accelerations will all show sinusoidal functions with time. So when we talk about sinusoidal motion, we're talking about this periodic motion that repeats itself. You're almost certainly familiar with this characteristic shape with its peaks that are separated by a period T when you graph displacement versus time or velocity versus time, there's an amplitude associated with the motion, which is the uh, distance vertically between the equilibrium and the maximum position uh, or the equilibrium and the minimum position. So it has an amplitude and a period. And those are the two numbers that you need to describe simple harmonic motion. What's the period? What's the amplitude? Uh, one additional number is often used, but sometimes it's ignored with periodic motion, which is the phase. The phase is defined as your initial value at, or is defined by the initial value at t is equal to zero. So for example, we recognize this as a cosine curve 
not because it has a period, not because it has an amplitude, not because of the shape, but because it starts out at a positive maxima. On the other hand, this graph we recognize as a negative sine graph because it starts off at equilibrium moving towards the negative side. So these are both sinusoidal graphs, but they have different phase associated with them, even though the period is two seconds for both of them. Uh, the amplitude is different five centimeters for this displacement versus time graph, and uh, looks like maybe about 16 meters per second for the velocity, or 16 centimeters per second, excuse me, for this velocity versus time graph. Uh, there's a great animation that I'll turn on for a moment just to show uh, the relationships with simple harmonic motion. We can see uh, on the graphs here, position, velocity, and acceleration. The orange, uh, orange, blue, and purple graphs here. When the displacement is a maximum, acceleration is a minimum. This is part of the defining equation of simple harmonic motion. The other thing we notice is that when the displacement is either a maximum or a minimum, the velocity is zero. And of course, you can see this in the block at either the negative maxima or the positive maxima, the block stops and reverses direction. On the other hand, at equilibrium, where the displacement is zero and the acceleration is zero, the velocity is a maximum. And so when you look at potential and kinetic energy graphs, we see the potential and kinetic energy trade off elastic potential energy in the stretch of the spring, kinetic energy in the motion of the block, and there's a maximum for the kinetic energy twice per cycle, once as it moves to the right, once as it moves to the left, and there's a maximum of potential energy twice per cycle, once on the left and once on the right. But of course, the total mechanical energy is conserved. Uh, two additional terms that we sometimes look at, we have frequency. Uh, frequency is often used in place of period to describe the motion. Uh, when the period gets longer, it means that the object is oscillating more slowly. On the other hand, when the frequency gets larger, it means that it's oscillating more quickly. Typically given in the number of cycles per second or hertz, uh, it is the inverse of the period. So frequency is one over the period. On the other hand, we have another term, phase difference, which uh, describes the uh, amount of... Uh, the relationship between the location of the maxima for the displacement velocity and acceleration graphs. That term is a little bit tricky to understand. It's usually given as a fraction of pi. Uh, and the way it's defined is the phase shift phi is the horizontal forward shift of a graph relative to the period usually times two pi, although some people will talk about a phase difference in degrees. So for example, if you look at the displacement as the primary graph here, the one that's shown in red, then the uh, acceleration graph is moved forward by one second, that's its shift, and the period is two seconds. So this would be what is called a pi phase shift or being out of phase because the shift one second divided by the period is two times two pi would be just pi. So a pi phase shift is known as half a period or is out of phase. On the other hand, if we look at the velocity, the maximum of the displacement is here. Uh, the uh, better place to see it is here at two seconds the velocity graph is shifted backwards, so minus half a second. That would be minus one quarter pi phase shift. Uh, or, sorry, uh, it would be minus one quarter of two pi or a half pi phase shift, a negative half pi phase shift. Uh, understanding that terminology and getting comfortable working with it is something that happens with time. And so that's our introduction to simple harmonic motion and energy and those graphs. We'll come back to this in topic 9.1, and I hope you'll join me in the next video in just a moment.